In the intricate tapestry of life, there are revelations that can shake the very foundations of our understanding. Imagine the startling discovery of your familial truth, a truth that unravels generations of assumed relationships. This was my reality when a simple DNA test unearthed a secret buried beneath the facade of family bonds. The revelation struck like a thunderbolt. My grandfather, the figure I had revered with the innocence of a child, was indeed my biological father. For more than three decades, this truth had been shrouded in secrecy by my mother, a woman whose complexities ran deeper than I could fathom. It was a revelation that pierced through the veil of normalcy, exposing a hidden reality tinged with deception and betrayal. Over a somber weekend, the truth unfolded like a tragic novel, revealing not just the genetic anomaly but also the psychological intricacies of my mother's character. It became apparent that she wasn't merely a typical mother but perhaps a narcissist or, in the most extreme cases, a sociopath. The implications of her actions echoed with profound gravity, leaving me to navigate the labyrinth of emotions and uncertainties. To truly grasp the magnitude of this revelation, let me paint a broader picture. Imagine a fragile web of trust, woven delicately over the years, only to be torn asunder by the weight of hidden truths. Picture a garden of familial love, thriving on the nourishment of shared memories, now tainted by the weeds of deceit. This is the landscape upon which my journey of understanding unfolds. But amidst the chaos, there is a beacon of clarity. By confronting these truths head on, I embark on a journey of self discovery and resilience. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, I find strength in the depths of adversity, forging a new path illuminated by the light of truth. As I navigate the complexities of my newfound reality, I invite you to join me on this journey of introspection and revelation. Together, let us unravel the tangled threads of familial secrets and emerge stronger on the other side. I lived with my mother, my grandparents, and my other family members until I was six years old. Although he is my mother's stepfather, I have never thought of him as a step-grandparent because he has always been a member of my family. At the age of 30, my mother gave birth to me. From what I was informed, my father was a married man whom my mother was dating at the time. He was never a part of the picture. After a while, he changed his mind and declared that he no longer desired to see her. He stated that he was determined to make his marriage to his wife work for the sake of his children. He just disappeared, and mom never saw him again after that. A short time later, mom discovered that she was expecting a child. It was not her place to destroy a family, and she refrained from putting a name on the birth certificate. She made the decision that she would not tell her parents the name of the guy, and she would not notify him unless he called her. My grandmother and grandfather were there for her throughout her pregnancy. Together, my mother and Chris, who would later become my stepfather, moved into a separate residence when I was five years old. Chris has his own peculiarities, he was kind, but he didn't want to become a father just yet. My mother altered all of her parenting principles in order to conform to his strictness, which was an unusual decision for someone who wasn't interested in having children. Let's move on to the matter at hand, shall we? After the birth of my kid, I began to wonder who my father is. This was, more than anything else, because I wanted to be informed of any potential medical concerns that he might have. I inquired about it the previous year, and she responded with the same response as she always does a married man with no pictures or phone number. At this point, I determined to begin investigating him. As far as the school was concerned, there was no record of his name. I was given an ancestry kit by my mother since she claimed that she had met him. The age of the individual did not correspond with the amount of time that people spend in school. When a member of my grandfather's family showed up there, you can imagine how surprised I was. In other words, I faced my mother over the weekend, who required a few days to remember what I said. I received the results over the weekend, and it turns out that my grandfather is actually my father. I am unable to accept the narrative that my mother told me since it was so bizarre, but I will type it here nonetheless. Given that she did not have any children, that her grandfather had mistreated her, that her biological father had abandoned her, and that all of her relationships were unhealthy, she was in a state of profound depression. Her preference was for married men, 
and as a result, her stepfather, who is also my grandfather's stepfather, was the first kind person she ever encountered in her life. They went on to become good friends. That they were having an affair was a joke that others would make, but it was never actually the case. On a night out while she was under the influence of alcohol, she confided in my grandfather about the reasons she was feeling miserable. She requested him to assist her in conceiving a child, and she also handed him a pot. Following the completion of the deposit, he went downstairs and immediately became aware that this was completely absurd. In light of this, he requested that she destroy the sample. She indicated that she would, but she did not, and she used it anyway, stating that they had never had sexual relations. After that, a week later, the married man she was seeing, the same man we are unable to locate any trace of, had a condom split, so she assumed that it was him. My grandfather and my father never suspected a thing about it. It has been determined through DNA testing that my grandfather is in fact my father, nevertheless, I am at a loss for what to do with this information or where my head is at this moment. In addition, I would be really grateful for any guidance you could provide regarding the next move that I should take. A couple of my thoughts that are all over the place. Clearly, my mother is a complete and full sociopath. Not only does she engage in such behavior with her stepfather when she was young, but she also coerced my grandparents into moving in with her so that she could raise his child while lying about whether or not she was getting an affair. What's more, if the account is accurate, she must have been under the impression that I might have been his and then lied about it. It is incomprehensible that a person who is capable of feeling and experiencing emotions would do something like that to their own mother, and then proceed to let this woman to care for her or their affair child while she is treating cancer. Once a month, my grandmother visits her to see how she is doing. It is impossible for me to believe that she is a person who has feelings because she is capable of lying to her entire family in such a manner and rubbing their faces in it in such a manner. I do not trust her because of this. This is something that even her husband is unaware of. Even more impressive is the fact that she informed her husband that she was going to visit my son when she was meeting up with me to tell me this. Her falsehoods never come to an end. Despite the fact that I was never aware of how insane my mother is, I was aware that she was a little bit crazy. My grandfather, on the other hand, is a very different story. He was my rock when I was younger and struggling with the overwhelming fear that my mother might pass away before I turned 16, and he has always been there for me. In spite of the fact that I believed he would not be so kind to his wife, he consistently shows her such affection. The tale that mom tells, on the other hand, is insane and revolting. How could she possibly lie? The advice that he should go to a sperm donor or bar crawl, dress up, buy a guy a few drinks, and not use protection was not given to him. This is because he is so intelligent. The question that remains is, what should I do with this information? Knowing that the entire close-knit dynamic of my family is built on a falsehood makes it impossible for me to confront them. Even though she spent her entire life caring for the woman her husband was cheating on her with and their affair baby, I can't image telling my grandma that her husband and daughter had stabbed her in the back. My grandma is a saint, and I can't imagine telling her that I'm going to tell everyone about it. My opinion is that at this point in her life, it could be fatal for her. The fact that she has had such a difficult existence is something that she simply does not deserve to look back on and realize that every single moment of her generosity was a waste. In the event that I could tell the world while still safeguarding her, I would do so, but, I do not believe that it is appropriate. I believe that it is only fair that my granddad be informed of this, if he is not already aware of it, and that my mother is allowed to walk away from this situation without any consequences. Although my mother claims that he does not, I find it difficult to trust any of this. If I tell him without mom engaging in conversation with him, then I will have the best possible chance of hearing the truth and understanding the situation. In spite of this, I only see him in the company of my grandmother very infrequently, and I am able to piece together the true tale. And I can't help but feel that this isn't my mess to clean up, my mother ought to tell him who is responsible for it. In addition, if she claims that I told him this narrative, I will know that she is telling a complete lies. I am currently experiencing a mental state of disarray, and my significant other is overly concerned with the need to safeguard me. 
So, I would really appreciate it if you could provide me with some objective advice regarding what you believe I ought to do. I want the best for myself, my significant other, my child, and my grandmother. I want what is best for all of us. The first update is made on March 30, 2023. It has been a few days, and the shock has subsided to some degree. Okay, enough said. Although I have read everyone's responses and attempted to respond to each one, I have been extremely busy over the past few days. A copy of the initial post is provided below for those who were unable to view it. Getting treatment, the fact that my anger appears to be directed entirely at my mother rather than toward my father and granddad, and possibly taking into consideration the fact that my granddad has been grooming her from a young age were the three pieces of advice that were consistent through the entire process. I would like to reassure everyone that each and every one of your opinions was taken into consideration. I would like to clarify that it was not that I did not feel angry against him, rather, it was that the shock of that particular bit hit me more strongly. This was so out of the blue and so different from the man I knew that it took me a little bit longer to grasp that this might very well be a type of grooming. My mother and I have always had a tumultuous relationship. On the other hand, over my entire life, he has been my rock. By emailing my mother about how I was feeling, I was able to take the matter forward. Although it is a very long text, it is too short. There are two primary concerns that need to be addressed. First, I do not accept your story, you need to explain what took place. Did this involve an affair? Is there something more ominous at play here? You are obligated to convey this information to my grandfather, my father, and my father's father. It was a pretty brief response from my mother. I was told that she would not speak to me about this again, that she was not groomed, and that this was her idea. However, she did not comment on my feelings or inquire about how I was doing at any point. Due to the fact that my inquiry has compelled her to reveal the truth, she does not express regret, and it is my fault that I am heard. The following day, she would share the news with my grandfather. It was soon after that that my grandfather contacted me, he sounded exactly like I did, shocked, perplexed, and so on. He told me his story, with two major distinctions, that it wasn't a deposit on the side, but mom had pre-bought a kit that permitted artificial insemination, which is just as likely to succeed as intercourse itself. My mother basically replied, I'm not as shocked as I thought I would be. He told me those two significant variances. Her argument was successful in persuading him that it was a good idea. The two arguments that stand out to him are you are the person I am closest to, and I trust you, and if I needed a kidney, you would give me that without hesitation. This talk, together with a few beers, meant that he went along with it. He is unable to remember every debate that occurred 33 years ago with the same level of clarity. On the other hand, after he had completed the task, he came to the realization that it was an utter error. He then informed my mother, this is a mistake. Let's not do this again, and let's not talk about it again as if nothing happened. My mother agreed with him, and she stated that she would throw away his sample. He then went home, believing that he had successfully avoided the most significant error of his history. Of course, contrary to what she stated, mom did not get rid of it but rather put it to use. As far as the legal system in my nation is concerned, this is sexual assault. As I indicated in my previous essay, my mother was subjected to sexual abuse at the hands of her grandfather, and her birth father abandoned her in a very public manner. My grandmother passed away when he was still a little child, and his stepmother was abusive. This is something that I did not mention about my grandfather, but he too had a difficult upbringing. By virtue of the fact that he considers my mother to be his daughter, he has arrived to the conclusion that he is willing to forgive whatever errors that his family may commit. In light of the fact that there was a lack of awareness regarding mental health, he feels like the antagonist of the piece. I failed to recognize the extent of her despair, and I deeply regret that I did not advise her to get professional help from a therapist. If he had chosen to take that course of action, it would have marked a significant failure in his eyes, a betrayal of trust that could irreparably damage their relationship. The weight of such a decision hung heavy on his shoulders, prompting him to consider the ramifications carefully. Despite the urge to confide in his wife immediately, 
he recognized the importance of involving me in the decision-making process, acknowledging my stake in the unfolding drama. Unlike my mother, he demonstrated a rare ability to empathize with my emotions, a connection that had been sorely lacking in our interactions. Yet, as I grappled with the potential fallout of his actions, I realized that the strength of our relationship would ultimately shape my response to the situation. In search of clarity amidst the chaos, I turned to my partner for guidance, seeking an impartial perspective informed by her insight into the intricacies of our family dynamics. Within the whirlwind of uncertainty, she offered a voice of reason, acknowledging the plausibility of his dilemma. Despite my mother's penchant for deception and manipulation, my grandfather's unwavering commitment to family emerged as his Achilles heel. Though the pieces of her narrative may not align seamlessly, the possibility of unforeseen developments lingered in the air, casting doubt on the truth of her words. As my partner and I delved deeper into the complexities of the situation, we found no evidence to support the notion of illicit affairs or clandestine rendezvous. Despite the fabrications woven by my mother to cast herself in a favorable light, we remained steadfast in our commitment to discerning the truth amidst the tangled web of deception. A simple explanation would be to explain that this was an instance of grooming or assault. This would be the easiest option. As an additional choice, why would you choose to fabricate this absolutely implausible lie? There are some people who might doubt if my mother is really that skilled at manipulating people. She once persuaded my grandmother and grandfather to purchase a house with her that neither of them could afford on their own, and it was located outside of their hometown. There are many other cases, but I will list the most significant one here. It was when I was younger that she moved out of the house a couple of years later. My grandma stated, You know how convincing your mom can be, and it's only by piecing everything together when I was older, when she has tried to convince me with some really skewed points of view or blatant lies that I discovered that way she communicates isn't normal but manipulation. As for the following steps, my grandfather has requested that the three of us get together on either weekend to discuss whether or not we should inform the extended family. He is willing to tell his wife if that is what everyone wants, despite the fact that he is aware that doing so will irreparably damage their marriage. Since my mother has not gotten in touch with me since then, I am skeptical that she will even show up. I intend to make use of this meeting as an occasion to verify whether or not my mother has withdrawn her consent when we are all there, in the event that she participates in this gathering. My mother has stabbed him in the back, and if she does admit this, then I have a tendency to believe that this bizarre narrative is genuine. Both of them were the most ignorant people in the world. Our relationship was real, and we were both in the dark, which means that I can see a method of constructing our relationship ahead of time. The shock that my grandfather expressed is real, but so is our relationship. On the other hand, I do not have faith in my mother, and if she were to admit to this, she would also be admitting to having participated in sexual abuse. The only reason she has admitted this so far is because she had no other choices because of an ancestry test. Normally, I doubt that she would disclose something like this. Without knowing more about that relationship, I am unsure. I have no faith in her but it is obvious that she is an elderly woman suffering from cancer and a great deal of mental illness that is deeply rooted. What should I do? Should I try to create a new connection with this woman and set new limits, or should I just sever touch with her because we do not trust one other? The old relationship will never be revived. I do not know at this time. When it comes to the extended family, I will also be establishing my limits. It was my grandfather who suggested that I should have a choice in whether or not my grandmother is informed. This is something that I am unsure about whether or not it is the morally correct thing to do. Considering that she is 83 years old, this will be catastrophic for her. When she hears this strange narrative, would she even believe it? In all likelihood, she was also subjected to abuse at the hands of her father. This has brought to light a great deal of abuse that has occurred inside my family it is quite upsetting. However, if my grandfather was subjected to sexual assault, would it be appropriate to call his marriage into question? Having said that, would it be appropriate to tell a lie about something of such magnitude? For the sake of my own mental health, I am unable to make this decision, and in the end, it is not my fault to clean up after it has been done. Consequently, 
I will be using this meeting to inform them that when it comes to the further phases, they will need to select between the two of them. Considering that my mother has been able to successfully conceal this life from everyone in her life, it is obvious that she will make that option. On the other hand, my grandfather, will he be able to deceive his wife with this device? Not sure about that. They will be informed that they are required to make a decision, and I will support whatever choice they make. On the other hand, if they decide to change their mind, they are obligated to let me know so that I can be ready for any consequences. A final update will be provided at our meeting, which is scheduled to take place within the next week or two. At this time, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who reached out to me and offered sound advice. Someone told me that I should marry my M since she has had to put up with the brunt of my mother's lunacy for more than four years. I will soon be going to see a therapist so that I may make a decision that is better educated and provide a clearer choice for what is best for me, my child, and my family. To those individuals, I will say that you are correct. We have been engaged for some time, and she is simply incredible. However, because of a pregnancy that resulted in the purchase of a house and the birth of our first child, we have decided to postpone the beginning of our wedding ceremony. The fact of the matter is, however, that she is the best and has been a rock throughout all of this. Utilities Update 2, May 4, 2023 it has been a few weeks, and a great deal of progress has been made. Considering that I have received such helpful guidance from you all, I thought it would be best to share with you what has transpired up to this point, and then I will refrain from providing any further updates. Before I go, I feel it is necessary to elaborate on a statement that was made in an earlier post of mine. With just one hour, my mother turned from being a normal person to a narcissist, according to the title. She has never been anything other than a narcissist. Narcissists frequently find themselves in possession of a golden child and a scapegoat. I was the golden child since I did not have any siblings who could be used as a scapegoat. My fiancé came into the picture, and a scapegoat was discovered. Over the course of the past eight years, I have gained a deeper understanding of her character attributes. Due to my lack of awareness, I failed to defend my partner when I should have. I was under the impression that it was my mother's inability to communicate effectively, which is something I have been aware of for a considerable amount of time. So, let's get started with the update. On a solemn Good Friday, we gathered together, my mother, my grandfather, and I, facing the weight of revelations that threatened to fracture the fragile bonds of our family. In a surprising turn of events, my mother collaborated with my grandfather to bolster his claim of stolen sperm a decision that left me grappling with conflicting emotions. Haunted by the specter of past abuse, I hesitated, torn between loyalty to my family and the gnawing suspicion of hidden truths. The possibility of an illicit affair loomed large, casting a shadow of doubt over the narrative unfolding before me. It was a truth so bizarre, so unfathomable, that it seared itself into my memory, an indelible mark on the fabric of my existence. Yet, as I wrestled with the implications of their revelations, I found myself at a crossroads, unsure of how to proceed. My initial inclination was to distance myself from the turmoil, to refrain from intervening in a mess not of my making. However, I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that silence would only serve to perpetuate the cycle of deceit. In a moment of clarity, guided by the wisdom of a trusted friend, I realized the futility of involving others in our tangled web of family drama. Will telling your grandma help you in any way, she asked, her words cutting through the noise with surgical precision. And with that simple question, I understood the path forward, to keep our secrets buried, to shield our loved ones from the pain of our reality. But even as I made peace with my decision, fate intervened, exposing yet another layer of deception. My mother's revelation, that she had misled my stepfather, painting me as the antagonist in our fractured relationship, struck a raw nerve. Faced with her betrayal, I could no longer ignore the toxic undercurrents poisoning our family dynamic. In a moment of clarity tinged with resignation, I confronted my mother, demanding accountability for her actions. It was a reckoning long overdue, a necessary step towards healing the wounds that threatened to tear us apart. And though the road ahead may be fraught with uncertainty, I refused to let fear dictate my actions, determined to reclaim the fractured pieces of our family's shattered unity. 
Not only did I have three days off from work after this talk, but I also wanted some time and space to put it behind me, schedule some therapy sessions, and spend time with my significant other and my child. However, none of these things ever happened. As a form of retaliation for what the police described as a minor altercation, someone attempted to drive a car backwards through the house of my neighbor that evening. A rifle was acquired by the neighbors. People in the United Kingdom fire at guns, which are extremely uncommon in the country. My child, thank the gods, was able to sleep through it, but my significant other and I were both nervous wrecks for a considerable amount of time after it happened. Of course, numerous others on the street phoned the police. So farewell, what a peaceful weekend it was, and thank you for making Easter so miserable. Following my efforts to ensure the safety of my family, I decided to pick up this family drama once more, and I finally got to meet my mother and stepfather over the weekend. As a means of establishing distinct limits in the partnership going forward, this was done. Due to the fact that she is battling cancer, my trust in her has been shattered, and to tell you the truth, I simply do not believe that she has enough time left to properly restore it. However, my relationship is distinct from both hers and the relationship that my kid has with his grandmother, who feels a deep affection for her and has been shielded from all of this. In recent times, I have experienced a significant sense of disconnection from my close-knit family. However, I suppose that is the consequence of having been lied to throughout one's entire life. Despite the fact that it is not very strong, my mother has made an attempt to apologize to me. I have communicated my emotions to her, but they have not been comprehended, and I have established new boundaries, many of which will most likely be disregarded entirely. Therefore, I will take the advice of my significant other's mother to heart, if you are able to offer a relationship to just one person regardless of the fact that you will receive nothing in return, then you will have had a happy life. My significant other and I are finally able to make the announcement that she has been pregnant throughout all of this storm. As a result of the additional strains, we have been quite anxious about whether or not the baby is doing well. However, during the initial ultrasound, the baby was interacting with its surroundings and had a robust and healthy heartbeat. All of you, once again, I am grateful for the assistance and guidance that you provided to me. Three months later, on June 22, 2023, the complete information may be found in my post history, therefore, I will make an effort to be succinct here. Over the course of my whole childhood, my mother has been dishonest about the identity of my father. I recently learned that she had sexually raped her stepfather, whom I have always considered to be my grandfather rather than my father. A saint who has spent her entire life looking after and caring for my mother and father, she has lied to me throughout my entire life, and she has put me in the terrible predicament of being unable to tell anyone about it since doing so would cause my grandma to die. Dad, who is 86 years old, does not deserve this news, and it will cause my family to be torn apart. The fact that I have a toddler and a pregnant significant other means that I do not have the time or money to go to therapy. The entirety of this is something that I am willing to overlook, but, if it were not for it, I would not be here, and neither would my child. The lie that I have told to other people about the reasons why I have been a little bit different is the thing that has wounded me the most through this. She conveyed to her spouse that I was preventing her from seeing her grandchild or that she was blaming me for her emotional distress. She has shown me that she does not get the reasons why I am upset via all that she has said, which is evidence of her lack of empathy and understanding. In spite of the fact that she is not a huge fan of my mother, my significant other has been a goddamn rock, and she has made an effort to maintain her impartiality and politeness, just as I have. In any case, let me begin by providing a concise summary of a rather complicated issue before moving on to my inquiry. Even though we were not the best communicators, my mother and I used to talk every few days. Despite this, we were fairly close to one another. I am now 31 years old, and my mother has been battling cancer since I was 15 years old. She was given a year to live. It has returned, and I don't believe she will be around for much longer. She is currently confined to a wheelchair. My partner and I want to be able to bury the hatchet so that when she passes away, we can say that we did our best and that we won't have any regrets once the shock of everything has passed. I want her to have as much time as possible with her grandchild before she passes away. 
It is our intention to do so, nevertheless, whenever either of us encounters her or communicates with her, we are filled with rage as a result of the previous wrongs, the new ones, the shock, and everything else. In addition, every friend that we have asked who is aware of the complete situation has stated that they would either not be able to forgive her or would refuse to visit her. And I do understand that, but when she passes away in a few months, I would really appreciate any guidance on how to forgive her so that I do not feel bad about it. Has anyone got any assistance? As a result of the fact that I did not receive any feedback on the previous post, I came to the conclusion that there would never be another revision to share. Suspense was the main emotion during the most of this. At that point, perhaps three weeks ago, all of the feelings came crashing down on me like a ton of bricks, and I began to struggle a great deal. The birth of a gorgeous kid took place in November for my partner. Because I was unable to ignore her tiredness and not take it personally, she is exhausted from having to get up to feed him. I was unable to do so. The healthcare system in the United Kingdom is slow, and counseling had just begun three weeks earlier, hence, I was unable to find a way to heal or find forgiveness for anyone, despite the fact that my mother was in a critical condition. On Thursday of last week, however, a significant development occurred. While I was writing down my thoughts, I realized that I did not really know the rules of updating on each sub. As a result, I decided to compile the article along with the update and put it here. My significant other reached out to my mother the previous week to convey to her how big an impact it was having on me. He did this after observing how much I was hurting. The response that my mother gave was, I'm sorry, he is hurting. I wish he would talk to me, but I don't want to hurt everyone by telling the truth. My partner responded by saying, As a mother, I'm sure you don't want to leave this world hurting your son. By not telling everyone, you are leaving him the scapegoat, and suggested that she should find a solution to the problem. As a result of this, she sat down and shared her interpretation of the reality with both my grandmother and her sister, which came as a complete surprise to me. On the flip side, my grandmother's reaction was swift and empathetic, offering solace in the wake of my emotional turmoil. In a moment of vulnerability, I reached out to her, tears streaming down my face as I unburdened myself of the weight I had been carrying for far too long. The truth, though painful, brought with it a sense of liberation, lifting the heavy fog of uncertainty that had clouded my thoughts for months on end. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I found myself able to think clearly, unencumbered by the suffocating weight of deception. The revelation acted as a shock to my system jolting me out of a state of complacency and propelling me forward with newfound clarity. No longer shackled by the chains of deceit, I could finally breathe freely, liberated from the confines of a lie that had threatened to consume me whole. Yet, even as I embraced the truth, doubts lingered in the recesses of my mind. The feeling of being ensnared in a web of falsehoods had gnawed at my conscience, leaving me uncertain of my next steps. But with each passing day, I found myself gaining strength, buoyed by the knowledge that I had faced my demons head-on and emerged victorious. As I grappled with the implications of my newfound clarity, questions loomed large on the horizon. Should I wait until my mother's passing to share the truth with her sister, sparing her the pain of confronting it alone? Wrestling with these moral quandaries, I sought counsel from trusted confidants, finding solace in their unwavering support and understanding. Though doubts still lingered, I refused to succumb to self-doubt, recognizing the bravery it took to confront my reality head-on. Even as my mother clung to her version of the truth, insisting that Robert was indeed my biological father, I remained steadfast in my skepticism. For the truth, though painful, is a beacon of light in the darkness, guiding me ever closer to the essence of my true identity. The opinion of my grandmother, my grandmother is still a saint because she is aware of how committed her spouse is to assisting his children and how difficult my mother's mental health was, she had complete faith in what they said. She had a deep affection for her family, and she is overjoyed for me that I have learned about my father and that I am aware that he loves me. Despite the fact that she is dissatisfied with her husband for not informing her when he got the news a year ago, she is relieved that it led to the birth of me since she loves me more than anything in the world. It makes her sad. It was not fair for them to put me through this situation because I needed to cope with it while I was also raising a child. 
Because of how incredible she is, I decided to name my child after her. The viewpoint of my aunt. My aunt got in touch with me to wish me well and is aware that my parents have no impact on our connection. It was yesterday, a little bit later, that she learned about it. The fact that she is disappointed and that her trust has been shattered does not change the fact that she loves her family, despite the fact that she has lost a great deal of respect for her sister and her stepfather. Despite the fact that she is aware that she is dependent on her family and that my mother and her poor health are dependent on her, she has expressed her disapproval of the fact that they forced me to remain silent because she believes that it would be a cowardly and inappropriate act on their part. Now that she has informed her children and told them that it is up to them to decide whether or not they believe the story, the situation is considered to have resolved. In my quest for healing and self-discovery, I've taken proactive steps to rebuild my life from the ashes of trauma. Armed with a stack of self-help books and the guidance of a compassionate therapist, I've embarked on a journey of healing that promises to restore balance and peace to my fractured soul. Though the specter of my mother's impending passing looms large, I refuse to let it overshadow my pursuit of truth and authenticity. With each passing day, I inch closer to reclaiming my sense of self, determined to forge genuine connections built on a foundation of honesty and transparency. Yet, I can't help but acknowledge the bittersweet reality of the situation. While the truth may set us free, its power to mend broken relationships is limited by the constraints of time. As the sands of time slip through the hourglass, I am painfully aware that the opportunity for reconciliation may be fleeting. Even if the truth were to come to light, I recognize that it may never fully erase the stain of doubt and suspicion that lingers in the minds of others. My aunt's poignant observation serves as a sobering reminder of the lasting impact of deception, a stain that may never fully fade. As I navigate the complexities of my reality, I am acutely aware of the skepticism and disbelief that may greet my truth. But even in the face of doubt, I remain steadfast in my commitment to authenticity, knowing that the journey towards healing begins with a single step forward. Edit for clarity, while some may question the validity of my mother's illness, the undeniable physical symptoms she exhibits serve as a stark reminder of the harsh reality we face. Despite the skepticism, her suffering is very real and cannot be dismissed as a mere fabrication.